South Bay surfing icon, big wave charger Greg Knoll dies at age 84 Greg Knoll lived life big beefy in stature, enough to be dubbed a bull, charging building-sized waves few others would dare, and becoming an early board building innovator, who helped shape the surf industry into what it is today. Knoll, who was raised on South Bay beaches and whose influence reached worldwide, died on Monday, June 28. He was 84. It's a major loss for the surfing industry. He was such a dynamic character said Dennis Jarvis, owner of Spider Surfboards. He was such a legend. The news of Noel's passing was shared by his son, Jed, on social media, noting that Noel died of natural causes and inviting friends and family to celebrate his life by sharing stories and photos. Noel was part of the inaugural group honored at the Hermosa Beach Surfers Walk of Fame when it was created in 2003. He was also inducted into the Huntington Beach Surfing Walk of Fame in 1996 and the Surfers Hall of Fame in 2006. He was featured in the 2004 surf documentary Riding Giants. Noel was born in San Diego in 1937, moving to Manhattan Beach with his mother at age 6 after his parents split. He'd spend days at the beach, surfing by age 10 and earning money cutting bait for fishermen at the Manhattan Beach Pier, according to a past article in the Daily Breeze. While not in class at Miracosta High School, he'd hang with the Manhattan Beach Surf Club and the likes of surfing pioneer Dale Veltzi in a small clubhouse under the pier, learning the trade of shaping boards from Veltzi. Jarvis remembers hearing stories from Noel and others through the years about his travels to Hawaii in pursuit of big waves. Noel was a natural storyteller, animated and sometimes brash, but always able to weave an entertaining story. Noel's escapades on the North Shore in the late 50s and 60s are well known in the surf world, how he was among the first to ride bombing Waimea Bay in 1957, paddling out in his trademark black and white striped shorts. He also was one of the few people surfing massive Makaha and Pipeline in those early years, once telling Jarvis of waves in one session that were so big and the wind so strong that the chop itself was the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Everyone was afraid to do a Jarvis set of the big Hawaiian surf. He was kind of a vanguard in that sense. When it got big, he had the weight to put behind him, to power through those sections and do things other people had not. Jarvis said. Knoll's Huntington Beach Surfing Walk of Fame induction describes one of his feats. At age 32, Noel dropped into a massive 35-footer at Makaha in 1969, jumping off his board as the earth-shattering lip touched down behind him. It was the largest wave ridden at the time and remained so for more than 20 years. He and others from the mainland would go and sleep under trees, awaiting the next big swell to hit the island. He was one of the first guys to connect with the Hawaiian culture. We owe a lot to him Jarvis said. Peter P. T. Townend, surfing's first world champion, swapped stories with Noel last year during the East Coast Surfing Hall of Fame Awards. Townend talked about one of the more iconic sessions at Waimea Bay, where only four or five guys paddled out that day. Noel the motivator. He was the first of those guys who just charged giant waves. He was just a hellman, Townend said, using the surfing slang for a daredevil. In 1956, Noel was invited to Australia during the Melbourne Summer Olympics to do a surf exhibition with local lifeguards. Noel paddled out riding the shorter, lighter balsa boards he had been using at Malibu, designs the Australians had never seen before. His influence is so greater than people realize. Townend, originally from Australia, said. That just changed everything in Australia. That was the first time Australians had seen boards like that all the shapers started changing their designs. After returning from Melbourne, Nell worked as a Manhattan Beach lifeguard, shaping in his garage after work. In the South Bay, Noel would become one of the early mass production builders who helped ship boards around the world, part of an innovative group that included Dewey Weber, Hap Jacobs and Veltzi. Surfing had been around a long time Jarvis said. But what they were able to do in Little Hermosa Beach in the South Bay area, when someone asks about the history of surfing, if it wasn't for the South Bay and this group of people, you wouldn't have this broad spectrum of production surfboards.